Okay, so we start with 300 cubic centimeters of air at 3 times 10 to the fifth pascals, and the initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And then uh, it's going to then get compressed. It's going to get compressed to only 50 cubic centimeters uh, at 7 times 10 to the fifth pascals, and they're asking us to find this temperature. All right, so why don't we uh, walk through how we would work that out? Any ideas how we would get started here? Good. Now, in this problem, the temperature is changing. So now the temperature is changing. So you could write, we want to get everything that's changing on one side and everything that's constant on the other. Good. Good. And it's important to put a subscript on everything. So this is P initial times V initial, because those could be separate. OK, that's good. That's exactly right. Yeah, you can do that. Sure. So far, so good. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Can I see it like that? Well, we could, but that won't give us the answer because we're not. Uh, that would tell you what one over t final is. All right. I could inverse the That's right. left hand side. That's right. Now, it depends on how comfortable you are with the math. If you're feeling comfortable with the math, you can do the algebra up front. If you're not feeling that comfortable with the math, it might be easier to plug in the numbers in first, because then the numbers can cancel on you, right? Then you don't have to do as much algebra here, basically. Um, I think the best thing to do here, though, if you want to do the algebra up front, is cross multiply. Cross multiplying is a great thing to do to get rid of fractions. What would we get if we cross multiplied this equation? What would the new equation be? Uh, P1, 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 Tf equals T initial, P final, See, notice how simpler, how much simpler this is. This is a very good instinct. Anytime you have two fractions set equal to each other, it's an excellent instinct to cross multiply because that gets rid of the fractions. Notice how in the approach that you were using, even though everything you did was correct, you still had that pesky fraction in there. So if we cross multiply, we can get rid of the fractions. Uh, and uh, what would be a good next step since we're trying to figure out what t final is? Dividing the right-hand side by uh, p initial v. Yeah, if we divide both sides by p initial v initial, it cancels from the left-hand side. And then we're left. Is this what you got? Yeah. OK, good. Now remember. You didn't have to do it this way. If you, it might have been simpler just to plug in the numbers. And then you could do some calculations. And that would make things maybe simpler. Uh, but it, it, it's, this isn't that hard algebra if you see to cross multiply. So we can do the algebra first. OK, well, then what? Mm -hmm. So for t initial, I plug in um, 273 plus 25. So that's um, 298. OK, and that is something we have to do. Remember we were just saying, it doesn't matter whether you're doing one situation or two situations, unless the formula has delta t, You've got to use Kelvins. You've got to use Kelvins because the conversion for Kelvins and Celsius is additive. Um, and that doesn't cancel nicely. Um, I don't know if that made any sense. But anyway, we have to use Kelvins here. OK. So uh, I'm not actually going to write down. Well, yeah, I'll go ahead and write down the units. That's 298 Kelvin. All right, what else? Turns out that's not really atmospheric pressure, but that was the final pressure. 7 yeah. times 10 to the fifth pascals. It turns out that in this problem, we didn't start or end at atmospheric pressure. So we'll just call that the final pressure. OK, good. Times um, the final volume, which is 50 cubic centimeters.
Good. Centimeters are going to cancel out. So. That's right. That was the reason, again, why we didn't have to make these standard. Um, so after all, the way to make this into cubic meters is just to divide them both by, well, I, uh, divide it by uh, one, uh, you would divide it by 10 to the sixth, I guess. But if you divide both the top and the bottom by 10 to the sixth, then you're not really changing anything. So we might as well stick with the cubic centimeters. All right, that's right, they do cancel. Good. Good. stop and think about that for a second. Most of those parentheses you don't need. The parentheses that you do need are anytime you have more than one thing in a numerator, you have to put the numerator in parentheses. Otherwise, the calculator doesn't know that it's all one numerator. And anytime you have more than one thing in a denominator, you have to put the denominator in parentheses. Um, and you actually put a bunch of other parentheses around everything else here, but we don't need any of those. After all, because after all, this is all multiplication. Well, you know, it doesn't matter what order you do multiplication in. It doesn't matter if you have 3 times 2 times 7. It doesn't matter whether you do 3 times 2 first or 2 times 7 first. So it doesn't matter where you put the parentheses in in a multiplication. The parentheses that you need here, we must put parentheses around the numerator to show it's all one numerator, and parentheses around the denominator. And that's a, a key fact of calculator use scientific calculator. If you've got more than one thing in the numerator, you have to let the calculator know by putting the numerator in parentheses. And if you have more than one thing in the denominator, you have to let the calculator know by putting that in parentheses. Whoops. All right, so it looks like you still want to put more parentheses in there. So that's actually messing you up. So, so 50 times 7 times 10 to the 5th times 50. Yeah, um, good. Well, this parenthesis is the one that's on the board, right? We have to put the denominator in parentheses. And that's really the only parenthesis that we need. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, you might want to make your note and definitely come back and do this because it looks like uh, you don't really have very high confidence on the parenthesis uses there. And uh, that can be important, at least when you're doing the homework anyway. Do you get a calculator on the test? Uh, well, anyway, for the homework, you definitely have to get the right answers on these types of problems without the parentheses. Okay. Um, and you can see this, a lot of people just do these by breaking them up into a bunch of small problems. But that might not even work here. You might not see how to break this up into small problems. It's much better just to put in the two sets of parentheses. One set of parentheses on the top and one set of parentheses on the bottom. So what was our answer? Uh, 115.897. Okay. Let's just call that 115.9. Okay. Uh, what units do we have? Because that's the only unit left standing here, right? All the other units got canceled. Okay, so that would be our final temperature here. All right, so that's some good progress here. So was this a one situation or a two situation problem? Two situations. That's why you didn't just use the ideal gas law. Um, that's why we use this approach over here of looking for the things that are constant and changing. If there was only one situation, you would use the ideal gas law. You didn't get any homework problems like that this week. Uh, so the key thing was to notice, unlike the previous problem, the temperature was also changing. So we had to move the temperature to the left-hand side here. We want everything that's changing on one side. And then we just write a new equation just based on the things that are changing. We just make this new equation based on the things that were changing. Well, here the things that were changing are PV over T. So PV over T initial should equal PV, fi PV, fi P final, V final over T final. Since they're both equal to this constant, they should be equal to each other. All right, and then you bet just plug in, and then there are definitely some algebra and calculator issues, so it takes some practice to learn how to uh, crank through that. Cross-multiplying is a great trick here, though, to get rid of the fractions. And if you're really having trouble with the calculator, I guess you could just do this one little step at a time. 
you could do 298 times 7 times 10 to the fifth and write that number down. And then you could do that times this and write that number down. And then you could do 3 times 10 to the fifth times 300 and write that number down. So you could break this up into very small steps uh, if you're really having trouble getting it to work out in the calculator. But all we really need here is one set of parentheses around the numerator and one set of parentheses around the denominator. 